The number one fear that people have when going to another country is that they will not be safe. No one wants to be in a dangerous situation in a place where they don't speak the language and they don't know how the police and government operate. Hi, my name is Alan and I've been living in Cambodia for over a year and today I'm going to give you my honest assessment of just how safe Cambodia is for tourists and expats. But first, a little trivia about my background. When I was last living in America, I was in a suburb just outside of Baltimore, one of the most dangerous cities in America. It has the nation's highest robbery rate, the second highest murder rate, and the 12th highest rate of vehicle thefts. And yet, when I first told my family that I was moving to Cambodia, that was when they told me how concerned they were for my safety, which I think really goes to demonstrate the biases that most Western people have. Especially in America, we hear a lot about you know these violent crime waves occurring in countries like Mexico, and we just kind of assume that all of these poor developing nations are just like that. But that couldn't be further from the truth, and I'm going to explain why. So let's start with murder. Asian countries as a whole tend to have the lowest murder rates in the world. And while Cambodia isn't quite as perfect as a country like Singapore or Japan in terms of murder rate, it is still 63% lower than it is in America, meaning that you are about two and a half times as likely to be murdered in America than you are in Cambodia. Citizens can't easily get guns in Cambodia, and even most police officers do not carry a gun with them in public. The murder rate here is a little higher than somewhere like the UK or Australia, but my impression has been that getting murdered is the equivalent of getting struck by lightning. It can happen, but it is very unlikely to happen to you. Okay, so you're probably not going to get murdered, but what about petty crime like pickpockets, purse snatchers, and that sort of thing? Well, I'm gonna tell you something that might surprise you, which is, that I feel safer with my property in Siem Reap, Cambodia than I have ever felt living in any city in America. I can leave my $300 bicycle just sitting outside for hours and it will always be there untouched when I come back to get it. I've heard multiple stories of people losing their wallets and having them returned to them with all of the money still inside. Even my wife tends to misplace her iPhone a lot, and yet no one has ever stolen it. Do things ever get stolen? Sure. Sometimes I'll hear a person tell a story like, Oh man, it's time to be careful. You know, I heard that a lady here got her purse stolen last week. But to me, that attitude just further goes to show how safe the city actually is, in the sense that if one person out of a city of over 200,000 gets their purse stolen in a week, people go, oh man, you know, crime's picking up. So yes, I would exercise some common sense precautions. For example, I do keep my door locked as a matter of habit, but there is no reason to be irrationally fearful while staying here. I'll be honest with you guys, the Khmer people are more morally upstanding than 99% of Westerners, and the crime rates here reflect that. In the capital city of Phnom Penh, there does tend to be a bit more petty crime, so I would exercise more caution while staying there. But I will tell you, I have been to Phnom Penh multiple times personally, and I have never felt unsafe there, whether in the day or at night. Statistically, Phnom Penh is about as safe as a similarly sized city in America, like New York or LA. But as an American, I personally have still felt safer in Phnom Penh. So again, use some common sense and you should be fine. Now, one thing that I do hear people say sometimes is this idea that people are going to target you because you are a foreigner 
And in some sense, that might be true. For example, a shopkeeper might try to double or triple their prices for you because they think that you are a rich foreigner. However, criminals are definitely not going to target you because you're a foreigner, especially if you are a man. Keep in mind that Western men tend to be a bit larger than Khmer men on average, which means that you are not the type that would-be muggers and such would want to go after. Additionally, if a foreigner does happen to be the victim of some crime, the police are more likely to do something about it. And that is because Cambodia relies a lot on tourism and foreign investment and that sort of thing, so they are really all about keeping foreigners happy. Meaning that criminals are actually more likely to target the locals because of the fact that they want to stay off the radar of the police. This is especially true when it comes to organized crime and human trafficking. Overall, human trafficking is definitely a big problem in Cambodia that is often overlooked by the authorities, but let me tell you, as a white tourist, you are the last person in Cambodia that these crime rings would want to target. That is because when a Khmer or a Vietnamese person goes missing, no one really bats an eye, but if a tourist were to go missing in Cambodia, that would become an international news story. So that is why you're not going to get kidnapped, murdered, etc. People will perceive you as wealthy and important, and that does help you in many cases. The case where it does not help you is in relation to something like corruption and bribery. If some sort of authority figure were to ask you for a bribe, that amount would be scaled based on how much money they think you have. Now, I'm really not going to go into much detail here, and it's not really what I would consider an issue of safety. It is just an example, though, of how you might be targeted due to your national origin. So I'll just say that if that kind of scenario were to come up, you can do what you want there. The last matter of safety is one that people don't really talk about as much, but is quite important nonetheless, and that is health. If you are visiting another country, they are going to have different diseases and a different standard of healthcare than what you are used to. And Cambodia is definitely not a country that is known for having high quality healthcare, which is a point of concern. Now, as far as potential health issues that could come up, I put them into three different categories. The first category is your everyday non-life-threatening diseases, like something such as the flu or a stomach ache or even COVID. Now, for something like this, it's really just a matter of getting a diagnosis and going to a local pharmacy to pick up whatever it is that you need. I've done this many times and you really shouldn't run into any problems there. Next, you have the potentially life-threatening diseases that are more exclusive to Cambodia due to its unique tropical environment. In particular, you have the mosquito-borne diseases, malaria, and dengue fever. If you're in a major city, I would just say to find out what the best quality private hospital is and they will be well equipped to treat those common mosquito-borne diseases. But I'll also say that if you're just staying in the city, you're pretty unlikely to get those diseases in the first place. However, one disease that you definitely can get in the city is rabies, which is a bit more common in Cambodia than in your typical highly developed country. The good news, however, is that rabies vaccines are extremely cheap, so I'll just say that if you get bit by some sort of animal, just get your shots, guys. It's not worth the risk of contracting a disease that is always fatal if untreated. Thirdly, you've got the more difficult to treat, life-threatening diseases like cancer, heart disease, etc. And for that, Guys, you basically just have to leave the country. 
Most expats would go to Bangkok, which is pretty close by. The wealthier people are going to go to Singapore, which has state-of-the-art, world-class healthcare. If you're from Australia or New Zealand, those are also pretty close by, so I'd say it would become pretty reasonable to just get the first flight back home. Overall, I would say that Cambodia is a lot safer than you probably thought it was. The crime rate is far lower here than it is America, although perhaps not lower than Northern Europe or a more developed Asian nation like Japan or Singapore. The lack of quality healthcare is the bigger concern, but I still don't think it would be enough of an issue to be a deal breaker for most people. Of course, I'm living in Cambodia, so I think it's pretty great. If you want to find out more about why I think Cambodia is a country that is worth permanently relocating to, then you definitely need to watch this video right here.